Yo, what's goody fam? Welcome back to the Human Behavior Mastery Podcast. This is a podcast where we talk about mindset. We talk about leveraging psychology to create a better business, a better life, and ultimately a better you. I'm your host, Dewan Mutunga, and today I got family with me, all right? I got, I got my brother with me, and I didn't bring him on just because he's my brother, but he's a person who has done tremendous things as a human and done tremendous things as a family man, as a businessman. And I think that he has uh, a lot of value to, to, to add to the, to the platform. So I got, I got one of my best friends, one of my brothers here, Mr. Jeremy Anderson. How you feeling, bro? What's good, bro? Man, blessed, Goody. man. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, Thanks I'm good. Thanks for having to... me on. Man, listen, you, you, know know, you, you know I had to bring, you know what I'm saying? Let's I'm saying? I'm saying? I'm saying? <laughs> bring my brother on. Yo, so... No, bump that. Let me tell them who you are to me, man. <laughs> so, man, this this my brother here. You know, um, he's helped me navigate my marriage, understand my wife more. We don't hire no employee, whether you're going to make 50000 or whether you're going to make a quarter mil with us. We don't hire no employee unless they go through Duwan. It's been people I wanted to hire. And he was like, dang it. And I'm like, dang, because I know. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he's helped me in business. He's helped me in my life. He's helped me in my own you know what I'm saying, mental health space. So I just want them to know like who you are to me because people be looking at me like, yo, Jay, you killing it because I got a bunch of killers on the team. So yeah. I appreciate you, bro. No, I appreciate you, you bro, man. Let's I love you. This, like, listen, y'all really about to just watch two brothers talk. That's it. This is how we, this how we chop it up. Um, and just, just, for, just for context, I want to say now we about to, we about to be 10 years in. Yeah, for sure. About to be 10 years yep. in. I want to say like early 2014. Mm -hmm. Um, locked in on the prayer line, just you know, relationship, yep. just going through life together. Bro, you got me my first big corporate gig. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, I remember it was just yeah. that back then it was just you and Tracy. Tracy yeah. was on a yeah. Tracy was on that doing was my a, first ten thousand corporate gig ten years ago. I was just like, okay, that's yeah. what we doing out here. And <laughs> and let me tell you, even back then. Right, cause people see the brand. If you don't know the brand, next level living, next level mm -hmm. brand. Jay, like I peeped the game. Like mm -hmm. I walk, I remember walking in, and Jay had the edible arrangement there. I was like, "Who sent the?" I looked. I was like, <laughs> yeah. "I was like, yeah." So you always yeah. have been over delivering. Yeah, like from the day that I met you. Yeah, always been somebody that has exceeded. Mm. Not looked to meet expectation. You exceeded. look to yep. you look to know what the expectation is, so you can exceed it. Absolutely right. Um, one of the probably. Top three, top two most disciplined people that I know, mm. right? Mm. And really, your heart, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, we've been in the trenches together, oh, like sure. your for heart. Sure. So to be able to endure, to to come from uh, the type of lived experiences that we come from, mm -hmm. and uh, to have the heart that you have and do the work that you do um, as a as a man. As, as just somebody who's in this world changing the world yeah. as a world changer um i'm proud of you yeah i'm blessed i'm man. blessed to call you my brother appreciate you man. right so i just want to let the people know just the, the mindset of somebody who you the president of the next level living club like committee the mindset you are the mm -hmm. architect of mm -hmm. what it is to live next level on all Mm -hmm. facets of life so mm -hmm. i just want to i just want to give them the game man yeah. like like where does that come from for you man so two things about me right one thing is i realized that people is human and something in my brain makes me believe if they can do it i can do it mm -hmm. i can explain it to you bro it's just something fundamentally into me where i look at somebody doing something amazing and successful and i'm like well you human just like me you know what I'm saying? When you wake up in the morning, you got to brush your teeth. If not, we talking crazy about you, right? <laughs> like, you, you know, you can suffer from depression, anxiety. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you want love and attention. And you People are human. So in my brain, I just, my brain is wired to when I see somebody do something great, I'm like, you know what? If they can do it, I can do it. That's the first thing about me. The second thing that helps me move the needle is I'm always looking like, how can I do more? You know what I'm saying? Like, I just got done speaking for one of the biggest gigs in my life. And it's, you know, they pay me forty, fifty thousand dollars every time I take the stage. I'm still growing. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the word says there's safety in the market to the council. Bro, I still call ET because ET spoke for this company two, three years ago. Mm-hmm. I still call him. I went on some pride like, bro, I'm a ride, bro. I'm at MGM in Vegas, bro. I'm nice. I got it. I'm like, nah, big bro. I'm about to do this humbly. Any suggestions? This is the approach I'm taking. He gave me a little game that enhanced it. So I'm always looking like, how can I do more? How can I experience more? How can I accomplish more? How can I add more value? Because ain't nothing like average about me like I'm, I'm just literally wired to say is there more i can put out here in the world like when my, my work on earth is done i want people to feel like yo he gave it everything i want god to be like yo he ain't have nothing left in the tank so i'm always looking to grow to see how i can get better in relationships how i can get better in business how i can do be a better leader you feel me is mm-hmm. i'm just naturally wired like that a to believe if they can do it i can do it so i got great expectations for myself but at the same time i'm just like okay what else can i do to get better on the inside yeah it's I don't think y'all understand. First of all, we're going to talk about this because Jay, <laughs> Jay doing stadiums now. <laughs> doing stadiums now, right? Stadium status. But I don't think y'all understand. Like, this is, this is, when, when Ho said, nah, not that cap table, boy. We live this. Hmm. Like, like, this is not cap. I've been in restaurants with Jay and we be sitting down somewhere and Jay be like, yeah, the light. The light is y'all light is dim right here. Can y'all go and change right? Like, like Jay, like we be laughing. We know it'd be like, well, surely. Like, no, it's <laughs> right. just you one of those other people that I've met, because my brain doesn't register no. Right. My For brain sure. goes to For how. Sure. For sure. So Jay be like, Yeah, well, surely we can figure out Surely. <laughs> surely we can figure <laughs> out how to make this happen. And I, I I think that that's something that is incredible that's that's an incredible trait and incredible mindset to have particularly when things are also not going well because it's very easy for when everything is sweet everything to be going well but like i said we done we done been through the trenches together i've watched you grow and transform things in your life and your business you've done so with with me and your attitude, your mentality, like you you show the humanness, mm-hmm. but also just like this, all right, mm-hmm. let's get to it. Right. 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 And it's right. a it's a relentlessness to your pursuit of growing. Mm-hmm. Right. So mm-hmm. so Jeremy Jermaine Anderson, <laughs> like where where do you just a little bit about where you come from, who you are, and then how you got into becoming uh, a motivational speaker and, and, a, and, a, and a serial businessman at this point. Yeah, so I'm glad you asked that because some people will look at me and be like, oh, Jeremy got all the answers. Jeremy's still figuring it out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mom had me when she was 16 years old. So you can imagine, bro, you know, you grow up young, poverty, trying to figure it out. Um, my biological father has never been present in my life. I'm 42 years old. You know what I'm saying? So po- biological pops was never present. Years of drug and alcohol abuse. Bro, I went to three different schools for the ninth grade. Mm. Like I got kicked out of Oakwood, then completely failed Johnson, then went to Huntsville High and finally got it together. You know what I'm saying? And so I experienced a whole lot of failure. I done pulled kick doors, selling weed by the pound. Like, I done been there and done that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so I got to a point when I began to work on my character, work on myself, got my life right, became like a real Christian, got baptized, and then began to live a life of purpose as opposed to chasing paper. And chasing women and chasing fame and just wanted to kick it. I began to really work on myself on the inside. So I went from struggling and failing to getting my high school diploma, graduating from high school on time, getting my bachelor's, master's degree. I've written seven books now, traveling the world, but it was a process. And all I do is I just share my story and my journey. You know what I'm saying? Because most speakers take the stage. They want to talk about how smart they are, how sweet they are, but don't nobody want to talk about the struggles they went through. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. Paul said, I could boast about how smart and how successful and how powerful I am. Paul was like, I boast all the more gladly about my infirmities, about my challenges, about my struggles. So when I take the stage, bro, I just let people know, like, yo, I'm human like you. I went through this. I went through this. I went through that. It was hella painful. It was really frustrating, but I ain't quit. And I kept fighting. And now I'm on the other side. And if I can do it, you can do it. So now there's that human factor mm-hmm. where they look at me like, yo, man, Jay, you went through all this, all that. Then this happened. Then you got arrested again. Then you lost your crib and all this happened. And you was the you was thinking about taking your life all that happened but you here now i know it's hope for me you know what i'm saying so my pain has paved the way you know what i'm saying for me to live a life Mm -hmm. of purpose and make profit like this you know what i'm saying yeah i think one of the things that i noticed and you know we we come from a a cloth where there's a there's a bunch of people who are speaking and doing and doing purpose work but i think the thing that separates you is just one just how disciplined you are period but 
how vulnerable mm-hmm. you are, mm-hmm. right? And vul- like you know, we men, we got egos, and we right, we, right, we for human. Sure. For sure, we get triggered, and we have moments where it's like, for oh, sure. no, I need to let for you sure. know who you're talking right. to. Myself. Oh, for sure. But like when I think about how as men we can leverage the power of vulnerability, I mm-hmm. think you do that better than most people that I know, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. What makes you lean so heavily into, like, not just the transparency, but the vulnerable aspects mm. of of your life? So I try. So I try my best to tell the whole story. Some people will stand up and just say, "This is what I struggled with. This is what I went through, and I'm kind of okay now." I'm like, "Nah, tell the lowest lows and tell the highest highs." Because I'm always doing like mental mastery. Like I'm always doing mindset work. So I'm going to let people know like, bro, I was in the gutter. I was in the trenches. I was not a good human. I was that low. Now I just put 40 kids through college. Now me and my wife just hit 13 years of marriage. Now I'm feeding a thousand people per month. And I'm baptizing folks at our conferences. So I'm like, yep, I was here. I was pulling kick doughs. I was struggling. I'll wake up to a fifth of Henny, bro. I'll put two blunts in the air and three shots of tequila before we leave for the club. Like I was that guy. If you had that work and I ain't rock with you, I, bro, I'm, I'm on the snatch and grab. You feel me? Like, I was mm. that guy, but I'm also the guy that's anointing people, that's baptizing people, that's marrying people. You feel me? So mm-hmm. I, show the, I show the valley lows and the mountain highs so that in their brain, they can say, no matter how low I am, no matter what I've struggled with, this is still the possibility. Does that make sense? No, it, it, makes, it, it makes tremendous sense. And I think that is something that we need to see more of. Yeah. That, that is a that is a the power in sharing mm-hmm. because pain is something right and you uh, we was uh, when you were speaking at the the conference you were talking about uh, being an expert in your pain mm-hmm. right and, and I, recycling your pain right and so yeah. pain is one of those things that I've realized it does two things one it connects us as people it connects mm-hmm. us as humans because it's something we all experience but it also creates community. Mm-hmm. Like we can create community through pain, but you're not you're not resting in pain, right? 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 right and right. I I watch just how disciplined you are. Like you for 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 as much as you say I'm a blessing to you, you've blessed me in ways. Just watching how acutely mm-hmm. focused you are on certain details, mm-hmm. right? So y'all like just you know super high D. I'm gonna go. I'm <laughs> I'm with all the shits. Right, like I want, right? <laughs> right but right, right. the, and, and sometimes the details get missed. Right, right. But you're still able to move right. at a pace of, of urgency and rigor right. while also moving with excellence. Like mm. that Mamba mentality, mm. that that acuteness, crazy story, mm. right? Give it just, we just talked about Kobe. So, Kobe I was just doing research on Kobe. Kobe was Kobe studied. <laughs> Kobe was studying the referee handbook to Come see on, where the on, refs bro. were supposed to be on the court. So he knew that if he needed to foul somebody, where he could foul somebody. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. <laughs> where he could Come foul on, what somebody we talking about? on the court. Yeah. Right. And I was laughing. And I'm when I whenever I come across those acute degrees of discipline. Mm-hmm. It makes me think about you and it makes me think about next level just because I'll be like, yo, Jay is very, very extreme, but in a, in a good way, extreme right. about things. Right. Right. And so you've also not only done that for yourself, but it permeates through your team. Yes. The businesses, just your lifestyle. Right. right? If you need to go take a gig, you coming back the same, like all of those things. Mm-hmm. Why is that something that you go so hard for and, and about? So I feel like I'm naturally wired as somebody that's going to automatically go hard regardless of what I'm doing. I'm just been wired that You're way. An extremist. I'm an extremist. I get it. You know what I'm saying? So when I was in the streets, like, bro, I was in the streets. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And when I got into the dope game, bro, I, I wasn't even nickel and diamond. I was straight to 10 pounds a week. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, when I was running nightclubs, it wasn't just one club we had. We had a club for the hood, and we had one grown and sexy where you had to wear a suit, you had <laughs> to wear heels, champagne <laughs> service, you know what I'm saying? And then the hood club, it was a restaurant during the daytime where it was like wings and fries, and we was moving them packs out by the pound and cops is in there eating 
on their lunch break and we moving the packs out, mm-hmm. but they put in the to go box. But I've always been innovative and going hard, whether I was on the, the right side or the wrong side. You feel me? And so now that I cross over to the right side, I just got that same energy within me. And so now I'm just trying to put my best foot forward every single day, add as much value, be as blessing, as much of a blessing to people and God is pleased. Like that's what my focus is. So I am an extremist, but it's like, where do I channel that energy? So when I was young, bro, you know, you remember Ritalin? Yep. Like that was the medicine they gave they kids for ADD, days, yeah. right? So I was supposed to get a Ritalin at eight o'clock before school start and then one at lunch. Bro, I was so off the chain, bro, teachers were giving me Ritalin every hour. Every period. I realized now that That's was illegal, illegal bro. Yeah, but at the time, back in the day, and yeah, when yeah, I would say something, right. like, hey, am I supposed to have, shut up or open your mouth? Bro, they mm. was trying to contain the greatness that was inside me. Mm. And I didn't know. I was just off the chain. I was just wired that way. So now I'm just like, okay, now I have to be, bro, that's why I'm so disciplined. Bro, that's why I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do alcohol. If you come to my crib, I'll make my wife a cocktail. I think I'm like a little makeshift bartender, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to have a sip just because I know what I once was. You know, it was years, 10 years when I was an alcoholic. You know what I'm saying? Functioning, still getting it done, but hitting the bottle. And so now I was like, I can't even touch it because I know what I once was. And so as disciplined as I am, I put those parameters in place because I'm winning now. Mm. And I want to keep winning. And Mm. I'll never take for granted where I've come from. And I realize it's possible for me to go back. There are people that have a rise and a fall. I want to keep rising. I want to keep, keep keep ascending. You know what I'm saying? And then not because I got so many people on our staff across our companies and nonprofits, foundations in South Africa, but I go to sleep early so I can wake up early, seek the face of God, like give me my assignment because I'm running three different companies. We making millions of dollars. I got 20 people on payroll. I got a nonprofit here in the States and in South Africa. I need wisdom and discernment on how to move and operate. Mm. So as much as I want to kind of flow and freestyle, I'm not nice like that, bro. I need those parameters in place so mm-hmm. that's the reality as nice as people think i am it's like i need the little bumpers when you go bowling i need the discipline is like them bumpers right. to make sure that ball as strong as it is as heavy as it is as smooth and shiny and round as it is it can still hit the gutters so discipline for me are those are those bumpers that's in place to make sure that ball stays where it needs to stay so we can hit them pins absolutely so so for the folks who who, who follow when I'm when I'm talking about the assessment and stuff like that. Y'all, y'all heard me talk about being able to process so much information and y'all, y'all heard me talk about not necessarily liking structure, but knowing that I need it. Jeremy's one of those people that I met and when we went through the assessment, one realized that you got triple mastery. So we, so we mm-hmm. both got the triple mastery in that Jeremy's brain processes so much Right. Mm. So it's not a surprise to me when you said they were saying I got ADHD. Right. Mm -hmm. Your brain is processing what's going on with people, uh, what's happening right now, what could happen around the Mm -hmm. corner simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Right. But you also are um, you move with a sense of urgency and rigor. And so what it does is having having a structure keeps you focused, mm-hmm. right? Keeps you laser focused mm-hmm. and locked in so that that energy um, isn't wasted and it's effective. Mm-hmm. And I think that was one of the things where like, ah, mm-hmm. I remember you be like, oh no, I, I, okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. How do I get other people to under to understand right. this, right. right? Because a lot of what seems like a curse or what people criticize about mm-hmm. us is really a blessing. Mm-hmm. We just don't have the right level Right. Of awareness about right. it. Yo, what's goody fam? Listen, I know, I know. I'm going to let you get back to the episode. But I wanted to take a minute to let you know about the Human Behavior Mastery course. Yes, we have a course that we put together for coaches, consultants, corporate leaders, and entrepreneurs. I know you're listening to the pod and it's all of this numbers and the, the adaptive and the natural, the D, the I, the attributes. We put together a comprehensive course to walk you through exactly how to understand each one of the personality types, each one of the values, and we're going to show you exactly how to get the most out of each type, what things you need to avoid, what environments to put you in, and what pieces to put around you to be successful. So if you're looking at taking your business, your life, or your relationship to the next level, make sure you go check out the Human Behavior Mastery course. Back to the episode. This is something I always wanted to ask you, um, and I'm, I'm not really clear on where did you come up with the concept of next level? Like, hmm. like, like what's the, what's the origin story behind 
next it's really a way of life at this point right what is the the like where did that come from so i remember um i was doing something that i tell people to do today that i really don't like doing which is watch your speeches and presentations mm. so i've been speaking professionally now for 13 years and the first two years I would like watch my speeches, whether it was for a church or a school or whatever. And I would watch my speeches and I found that there was a constant theme where I kept saying, hey, this is what you got to do if you want to get to the next level. Like you ain't supposed to stay right here. There's another level for you. And so after about a year and a half of watching my speeches, I was like, that's like a common theme. You know what I'm saying? And the more I said it, the more I hear it, the more I say it. And so I was just like, man, I'm about to create this brand called Next Level Living. You know what I'm saying? Which is the constant pursuit to be everything that God has called you to be. It's the mm. constant, it's like you never arrived. Next level living ain't saying I'm living on the next level. It's the constant pursuit to be everything God has called you to be. Because if I say I'm, I've arrived, then that's like, I'm going to stop ascending. I'm going to stop trying to go to the next level. It's like, nah, I've done some great things, but can I accomplish more? Can I achieve more? Can I, you know what I'm saying, make more? Like, can I make more impact? So it's the constant pursuit to have more. That's what next level living is all about. And whatever that more is, more for you, more for your family, more for your community, more resources. That's what it's all about. And so that's where Next Level Living came from. I just found myself saying it often and was like, let me lean in there. Yeah, I, 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 never, I never realized where it came from. Yeah. I just knew it always worked. Yeah, no doubt. It, it always yeah. fit. Yeah, for sure. Like, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being real. Like, I don't, um, Jay is one of the people that has had the, the privilege of watching my growth and development. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure you can see I have come uh, a, long, a long way. A long I'm way. Proud. Very yeah. raw. Yeah. Very <laughs> uh, raw potential. Yeah. Right. And you're one of the people who have helped polish me and, and shown me, like, oh, like e even little things, like, you know, and, and so just going back. There was a time when, you know, I was going through a divorce and it was a really crazy time in my life. Mm -hmm. And one, Jay was Jay was a space for me, right? Because because there, there were people that were like, oh, you got to toughen up and you got to do this. And it's mm -hmm. like, nah, at some point, right? For at sure. some point, for sure, like we, we got to do what's healthy and, and, and what's right. right for you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then I, I remember we were at the retreat and you prayed over me. Mm -hmm. You had the you had the whole whole cabin mm -hmm. pray over me. And I was like, yo, there's something different, mm. right? And it's, you know, there's somebody watching who like, you you feel something in you, but you don't quite have the language. Right. And you feel like something is missing, but you don't quite know what it was. But when I got in this space, right. I was like, oh, and, and I saw how, again, the, the next level, just the constant pursuit mm -hmm. of, we was all like, oh, I'm gonna get a bag. Right. But how you were at home. right? Right. I, I didn't come from an environment where I saw healthy relationships right. or, you know, marriages or anything like right. that. So sometimes mm. just by not seeing you crash and burn. Right. But it, it was little things like, you know, it'd be Tracy's birthday. You're like, bruh, um, come with me. We about to go get these balloons and let's and yeah. let's set this up or. Y'all, I'm about to go get her some some flowers. I'm like, oh, we about to go to the store and buy some. You like, no, I'm gonna hand pick right. the flowers and right. make an arrangement right. for her. I'm like, right. you was a florist or something? Right. Like, what you, right. <laughs> like how you doing? He's like, nah, bro. I just I be seeing this stuff and I just want to make I just want to make my girl smile. Yeah, yeah. And the things that you were looking to do and the things you were looking to remove yourself from, mm -hmm. the things you were looking to abstain from. Mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, okay, this this makes sense. Mm. Cause I'm not gonna lie, I, where I'm from, I got people that love me, so they they've always poured into me and wanted to give me game, but right. the game wasn't like their intentions was in the right place, but right. the game wasn't fitting right. for the type yeah. of person life. you was trying to be and where you right. trying to go. Yeah, and so being around you on a day to day, I'm like, yo, and just me being competitive, I'm like, <laughs> you know, he's he, this. I'm talking about the way he hold his fork. He like, <laughs> he, he wants to be excellent about everything. And I'm That's like, funny, okay, this is, this, this is literally a lifestyle. It's an embodiment. Mm. And now I'm watching what you're doing. And I've seen, you know, from again, like the first corporate gig to the first conference, mm -hmm. you know, wife, children, you built everything with integrity. And it comes from this, this mindset and this mantra mm -hmm. and this level of discipline. And I just mm -hmm. don't see folks 
carrying that consistently. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think is the first step for somebody that might be watching us or listening to us that may be going through life is life and like what do you think is the first step to getting on a track to living a next level life or having a next level mindset? You know what? You know that you know the classic phrase, right? Um, being sick and tired of being sick and tired. I think the first thing they got to do is ask themselves what kind of life they want to live. Mm. It's just like before you even start making changes and say you're still going to start waking up at four o'clock, whatever. What kind of life do you want to live? And then it's like, okay, what kind of person do I have to be to experience this life? Because this world ain't going to give you what you deserve, but this world going to get you what you work for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So people see my lifestyle. They see the crib. They see the pool. They see how I travel. And they like, yo, I want that. Like, don't desire this. This is the outcome. Desire the work ethic. Desire the sacrifice, desire the discipline, desire the sleepless nights, desire the perseverance, because that's what gave birth to all these things that you coveting. You know what I'm saying? So you need to cover my grind, cover my grit, cover my laser sharp focus. So that's what I tell people. So if somebody's ever like, man, I want that. How do I get to the next level? OK, what do you really want out of life? And now what are you willing to do? Because it comes with sacrifices, bro. Because because my biggest concern is that people will just kind of go willy nilly through our life. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like, hey, whatever comes my way, how you doing? Oh, I'm just holding on, man. Miss me with that. I'm just holding on. Like, miss me with whatever life throws your way. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, we know it. Things ain't happening to us. They're happening for us. Yep. So even when situations ain't working out, well, if you lean in, you actually going to get stronger from it. I tell people all the time, bro, the most successful people in the world aren't the most gifted, smartest, or the most talented. They are those who are the most disciplined. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you how a homeless man changed my life. I was in Ch either Chicago or Philly. I remember stepping outside the hotel. The driver had just picked me up. I jumped in with him and I seen this old dude like begging for something. Now my man in his face looked like he was like 70. But I could tell he was like in his early 40s. Mm. But his face, you know, bro, you living on the streets. Mm -hmm. And so he asked him some money and I I had maybe $30 cash. I gave it to him. I don't know what he going to do with it. I ain't judging. So I said, I said, "Hey man, let me ask you a question." I was like, "What happened to you?" He was like, oh, man, like, I said, ah, but what, I'm saying, like, what happened? And my man was just, he told me, he was like, ah, I was in school, I was dropped out, you know what I'm saying? We turned to this, this turned to that, then I was on heroin, and it just ended up happening. And I was just like, man, my man accidentally became a failure. Mm -hmm. And I realized something, if you're not intentional about being successful, you can accidentally become a failure. Mm. Like, bro, life is hard enough. People be growing up without families, without loved ones, without resources, depressed, in bad environments, toxic. Like, bro, life can be hard enough. And if you just go with the flow, your life is going to be trash. You have to be intentional about making the necessary changes. And some people, the way they wired, and you know this all too well, because you work with a lot of different people when it comes to mindset and mental mastery, they don't really, they don't really care about their future. They ain't really on that. So now you got to figure out, okay, well, who do you care about? Is it your mom? Like, e that's why I made e's, E.T.'s message years ago, you know what I'm saying, what's your why so potent? Mm -hmm. It was like, is it your mama? Is it your granddad? Is it your children? Like, like who is it that's going to make you, like, what's your why why you do what you do? So the person that's wondering, like, yo, how do I get to that next level? Ask yourself, what does that next level look like? What type of person do you have to become? And who are you doing it for? That's what I would tell him, bro. And then you got to put that work in every single day because the world ain't going to give you what you deserve. The world going to give you what you work for. You got to go out and get it, bro. Everything I built, before I had a Speakers Academy, before all of that, bro, I've been building my dream home, been doing seven figures, like been doing that. All this other stuff is the overflow. But I knew what I wanted and I had to go out here and get it. And it was hard. But on the other end, bro, on the mm -hmm. other end, it feels good to get it. You know what I'm saying? But I know how it feels to fail. I'm just addicted now to winning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You and it's contagious. And it's contagious. Yeah. And can I just also say this? Like, man, it's been also hard. Like, I probably say, I probably say the biggest challenge I've ever gone through has been in my marriage, bro. Mm. Like, bro, my wife was breaking me down, breaking my spirit down, just because just she was broken, not trying to be. She wasn't trying to be the evil villain. But for a very long time, we just were at odds and not on the same page. And I was suffering silently and dealing with depression, pouring into everybody else, but just didn't feel loved on the inside because of how she was and how she was wired. And it was just a season I had to go through. You know what I'm saying? And as painful as it was, like, that was just my truth in that season. So I had to make a decision of what kind of person I was going to be, was it going to fight through it. And it was hard. Hard. But I'm sharing this with people just to be vulnerable and transparent. 
like life be life in mm-hmm. for everybody. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And and it's as challenging as it is, on the reverse end, something deeper is growing inside you. So to the person that feel like ain't nothing working out, to the person that feel like, why has this got to happen to me? I would just challenge them to take a moment and think about what their, wife, what their life could look like. Because there's somebody else com- there's somebody else praying for the very thing you're complaining about. I was talking to one of my friends. They was like, man, I'm, I'm so tired of this stupid car. And I was like, huh, that's funny. Because my neighbor is out here trying to bum a ride to work. And they wish they had that putt-putt that was struggling to get down mm. the road. Or somebody else, I remember one of my homeboys, I called him, and he was just like, bro, these kids, my wife out of town, the girl's trip, these kids driving me crazy. I'm like, bro, my homegirl just lost her son in a house fire. She wishes she can hear her son driving her crazy, running through the house one more time. She wishes she could hear that baby wake up in the middle of the night. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, folks be sitting back complaining about their spouse. Well, my sister lost her brother, my best friend, Brian. So what we really saying, so I challenge people all the time, yeah, your situation is bad, yeah, it's really rough, but we got to master our minds. It could be somewhere worse. I was talking to a friend of mine, and she was like, yeah, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. I'm like, yeah, but you grew up in a refugee camp. You could still be in that village. You could have been kidnapped like other people and got caught up in the sex trafficking industry. Like, So life ain't perfect right now, but it could be a whole lot worse. Mm-hmm. And so I think when we get to a point where we say, yes, I aspire to have more, I want to accomplish more, I want to achieve more, and I'm not happy with where I am, all right, watch it, because it could be worse. There's a difference between happiness. Happiness is like if something works out, I'm happy. Somebody do something for me, I'm happy. Joy is inner. Joy is like, you know what, I'm joyful about the situation, even though it's not ideal, there's still joy in my heart. So I would just tell people to really caution themselves on how they move and operate, what they aspire to do, embrace the storm. But when they feel really, really down, just remind yourself it could be a whole lot worse. And that's going to make you grateful for where you are. But then it goes to my next thing, if I may. Always grateful. Never settle. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I preach that everywhere I go, every stage I'm on, I talk about the concept of always being grateful, but never settling. And most people get to a point where they're really, really grateful, and then they stop aspiring for more. And I'm like, bro, you done gave up. It's like the ball player that make it to the league. They gave it they all in high school. They gave it they all in college, D1. They made it to the league now, and now they just kicking it. Mm-hmm. But then you got some that's like, yep, I'm grateful to make it to the league, but I'm trying to get drafted to this team. I'm, try- I'm grateful I made it to the playoffs, but I'm not fulfilled because I ain't win the chip. I'm grateful I won the chip, but bro, why we ain't win the next year? And why we ain't win the year after that? I'm trying to three-peat. I know it's possible. MJ did it twice. That's the difference, bro. That's what separates the weak from the strong. The people that's going to work for somebody and the people that's going to have employees. The people that's barely getting by or doing okay per year to people that's building wealth. Is there are people that get to a certain level and they feel like they've arrived and they stop pushing for more when God got so much more for them. But there are some that's wild like us that's like, okay, that's cool, but I want more. Yep, mm-hmm. I made it to the league. Now I want to make it to the playoffs. Now I want to win the championship, but I want to win year after year after year. That's a different type of mindset. That's why we got so much love and revering in reference for Kobe. My man was different, bro. And that's that's what I be trying to embody day in and day out. That's the it's it, what I'm hearing you say is about perspective. Mm-hmm. Right? And I tell people the life that you're living right now is mm-hmm. a reflection of the choices Mm-hmm. that you make mm-hmm. and the choices that you make are a reflection of what you believe to be available what you're come aware on. of come on but it doesn't reflect all the choices right. that exist right so you have to have a thirst and a hunger to expose yourself to more options right so you can choose your, your life is out there the life mm-hmm. that you want is out there mm-hmm. you just can't choose it you can't live it because you can't choose it and you can't right. choose it because you're not exposed to those options. Right. Right. The, I, I love studying Kobe. Um, and I mentioned this at one of the masterminds, but you just said it just now when we were talking about perspective. Kobe, the, the crazy thing about Kobe's passing to me was, okay, so we know that he, he passed in a helicopter crash. Mm-hmm. But I looked into why he started flying in the helicopter. Come on, Come on. yeah. And so Kobe wanted to be the great, the greatest basketball mm-hmm. player ever, right? But, you know, married to his wife, he wanted to be an active participating mm-hmm. father because he was saying like, yo, you know, I'm on the road. So when I'm home, I want to take the girls to school, bring them back. And he lived, I think, like an hour and a half mm-hmm. or something from... Uh, the stadium Mm -hmm. so he was like instead of getting in traffic Mm -hmm. and missing stuff 
I would just take a helicopter <laughs> back bossy. and forth, right? <laughs> bossy, bro. So Kobe's like, I, I train twice as much as everybody else. Yeah. So now I'm being able to train more as I'm taking a helicopter. Right. And the thing that blew me away, just like perspective wise, was if Kobe was average and he wasn't Come obsessive on, about being the best, on, he would have never taken a helicopter. Yeah, still be here. He would still be alive if he was average. Like he would have never even thought to to hack and start mm. taking helicopters. And I'm like, the thing that gave him the competitive edge that made him excellent and great, he just so happened to pass that way. So one would say, yes. And I've said the same thing, and I've been leery of saying it in public, so I'm glad you said it, right? Because people that love Kobe, would, it's like, yo, so you're saying it's his fault? One would say, no, I know you're not saying I'm not, that. I'm I know not you're saying not saying, saying not that. But, but I've said the same thing. Like, yo, the same thing that pushed him to greatness to be there is the same thing that if he didn't have that, he would still be here. Or one would say, if his pilot had operated at that super duper high level, he would have saw the forecast. Mm -hmm. He would have realized how cloudy it was mm -hmm. and would have been like, hey, I'm going to take a different approach or maybe we should wait or I feel like we're going in some clouds. Let me get up out of here. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because I wonder if there was another pilot, if he would have took a different approach. Now, I'm sure he got somebody that was amazing and phenomenal. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Come, so you, so it's like that same energy. You got to match it. So I understand now. That's why you got to get in an environment. Bro, you got to be in a bro. team. You got to be. And when you're trying to operate at a high level, you can you can only operate with people that's also operating at that high level. Let me hey listen, let me be clear. I'm a firm believer in day twos. Right? Hmm. So <laughs> we we all got day I've one. never heard that before. We I think I know where you're going though. We all got day ones. Yeah. We grew up out the sandbox. Yeah. We done shared chicken sandwiches. Yeah. We done shared a snack box. But I believe in day twos. Yeah. Right? And the day ones, we we have you didn't get to choose those people. Hmm. They were attached to you based on your environment, your environment based right. on your circumstance. Right. And usually the language of day ones is survival. Hmm. Usually the conversations with your day ones is about stuff we used to do. Yeah. And how we used to do this yeah. and the silly things we did. And the, oh my God, you remember that time? Your day twos, you get to a point. You choose your day twos. You choose your day twos. Hmm. Your day twos are from different places. So it's hmm. intentional. Your day twos. Y'all speak the language of thriving. Mm -hmm. How do we excel and expand? Mm -hmm. How do mm -hmm. we add value to each other? How mm -hmm. can I help and support? And so I believe you need that. The way you got a right hand and a left hand, you need mm -hmm. day ones mm -hmm. to keep you grounded and mm -hmm. let you know where you come from. Mm -hmm. But you need day twos that are going to push you. Absolutely. And challenge you. Absolutely. And, and stretch you. Absolutely. Right? I, I, was saying, I was saying at the King's Conference, like, y'all... You know, you crump, maybe like the bros in the prayer line, that level of accountability was like sandpaper. Yeah, oh, for my bro, soul, for bro. sure. Like I grew for sure from like, bro, that's that's not that's not it. Right. That's not the way to do that. Right. Let me show you that like not just mm. telling me what not to do, but like, yo, here, because I'm 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 the young, I'm the pup out the out the crew. So it's like right. yeah, I'm running around here just <laughs> yeah, learning, taking it all in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I was like, yo, it's that perspective right. and then doing something with the perspective. So so being where you are now, right, what is something that you realize now that you understand that you wish you understood when you were younger? Um, hmm. You're like, man, if I knew this back then, I would probably say what's possible. The mindset I have now I didn't have this mindset 10 years ago. I've kind of evolved and grew into this space. Mm. And, the, the, and the further I go in my evolution and in in, in, in me evolving is the more I realize what's more possible as I begin to accomplish more things. And so for me, if I could go back, I would tell the, the me years ago to take to get more mentors, more mentorship. Mm -hmm. I would tell myself to take to heed, take heed to their advice because it was time CJ, ET might have told me to do something. And I was like, yeah, all right, I'll get to it or okay. Or I was like, okay, bet that makes sense, but I didn't really want to do it, so I didn't pursue it. Then I look up two years later and now I'm doing it. And I'm like, man, I could have been killing it, making it that much more. Had I, you know what I'm saying? So I would have told myself years ago, 
you know what I'm saying, to find more mentors and then to do what they actually done. Find mentors who are in alignment with who what I'm who I am, mm-hmm. right? You want to make sure you find mentors who are in alignment and who also got a track record. Cause some people be out here finding mentors online that's got <laughs> two years of success and they ain't never went through nothing. They ain't went through no recession. They didn't had two years of a highlight. And it's like you gotta find somebody that's been tried and true. And so that's what I would that's what I would say do. And then I would be even more cautious of getting in the right rooms and surrounding myself with the right type of people. That's going to constantly push me. Like, bro, I want to be different, bro. I've been studying the greats, bro. Did you know what, um, what, what is it? Is it the, it's the Grammy, it's music. Is it the Oscars the for o- movies? The Oscars, yeah. The Oscars. Did you know that while Jamie Foxx won the Oscar for Ray? It wasn't just his performance, bro. It's the work that he put in. Did you know that he gave himself prosthetic eyes and he made himself blind for 18 hours a day? That's crazy. He, bro, he wanted to embody what Ray Charles went through. So he was like, I could, like literally, bro. The director was like, bro, just close your eyes. He could have been like this, cut, open his eyes. My man was like, nope, 18 hours a day, I would avail myself to blindness. Bro, that's different, man. My man put on these prosthetic lens where he could not see. Then he put his glasses on. So there was no option to cheat. So now when they bring in craft services and it's like, okay, we going to cut for an hour or two for lunch, my man's still having to navigate and eat. You know what I'm saying? Why he blind. He need them fill around. That's why his skill level was to that point because he embodied it. Bro, do you know why Leonardo DiCaprio won the Oscar? It's my man when he did the movie The Reverend. Bruh, iconic. <laughs> Bruh, my man was eating real bison liver. When they was like, cut, you <laughs> off for the day. They ordering steak and shrimp and Chick-fil-A. My man eating bloody bison because he's like, I want to embody what this character went through. When they like, all right, we're done for the day. Everybody go back to their trailer, back to their hotel suite. My man was sleeping at night on set in a dead carcass. A dead carcass, bro. Yeah. Like he different. But this is what they unveiled themselves to. But that's the cost of greatness. And most people don't want to do that. So I probably would have had a real conversation with the with the with the 32 year old Jeremy and said, Hey, do you really want to be great? Are you really ready to go through this pain? Are you really ready to go through this adversity? How about you stop complaining? How about you just embrace it because it's birthing something greater inside you? I get it now, but bro, 2015, I was complaining. Oh, 2015, bro. I was like, God, why are you doing this to me? I was on some weak boy stuff. I was like, God, I'm a good dude. How come things ain't working out? Mm. Why won't she love me? I wasn't realizing something was being birthed inside me that was pushing me to that next level. So I would tell the younger version of myself, find you more mentors. Stop doing things your own way. Do what, whatever they're telling you to do. And then stop complaining because these things you're complaining about are the very things that's pushing you to be the best you can be. Mm. Yeah, bro. Listen. And I, and and again, man. Like I think it all comes down to mindset, mm-hmm. mentality, absolutely. Like and and just this hunger to want more, mm-hmm. right? This not running away from who you are, what's good, what's bad, so that you can fix it, right? Right. And now you're in a season where, you know, you, you said you were already speaking, you know, and being successful for yourself, but now you're in a season where you're blessing other people and you're training a, 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 a new generation, right? Right. So so talk a bit about you know, some of the things that you're doing now in this season, right? We uh, we see Jeremy Anderson now, mm-hmm. um, the way you're traveling, the way you're moving, the conferences and everything. Like, like, what is it like day to day for you now? What's the mentality? What like, and then where? What's the next level for Jeremy? So I think so. So day to day now, I'm really trying to be a good steward mm. over who I've been blessed. You know, to serve, to, to lead, to God, to mentor, to coach. You know what I'm saying? The good thing about ownership, you know, we talk about ownership often, right? Whether you own your intellectual property, whether you own your brand, your name, the good thing about ownership is you the boss. So at my conferences, bro, if I decide God says to have a baptism at 7 o'clock in the morning on the rooftop of the Marriott Marquis, bro, uh, I ain't got no boss. Ain't nobody going to tell me you can't baptize nobody. I would Wish nigga would you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I'm gonna do what God because it's mine. I got ownership. And just, and how many people did you baptize at the last conference? So on the first day, it was 75 people. <laughs> 75 people end up getting. And let me tell the people how this happened. So at last year's conference, we ended up baptizing 40 people by accident. Literally by accident. <laughs> right. I, hey, listen. If I'm lying, I'm flying. I'm sitting in the right. back next to Nick. 
And we looking at the time, like, all right, Jay supposed to get off the stage. Jay was, you know, we 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 time clocking, and Jay was like, yeah. And so, you know what? I feel led by the spirit, and we both looked up, like, up. Oh. <laughs> right, right. And right. next thing you know, there was an appeal, and people came down, and it yeah. literally just happened like that. Like it, it was, yeah. Because I was trying to shout out Logan, because Logan was like, "Yo, at the conference, I'd be honored if you would baptize me." Because he saw when I baptized B Rad in the ocean at one of our masterminds. Right, and right, so right. he was like, "Bro, I need to give my life to God. I've been a Christian, kinda, but I need to." I was like, "Bro, I'd be honored." So I was just like, "Yo, Logan, stand up." I was like, "Yo, tomorrow I'm baptizing Logan. If anybody want to come and support him." And yeah. people start standing up crying. I seen one dude with gold in his mouth. The big dude. Oh, I was like, bro, what you saying? <laughs> My man with tears in his eyes was like, I don't want to be baptized. I seen this other woman come down crying. The ushers brought her down. I said ushers. They was really volunteers. But mm -hmm. it felt like church. And yeah. next thing I knew, bro, I was just like, all right, I feel the spirit moving. Mm -hmm. If there's anybody else that wants to be a part of this baptism that wants to, because I was just talking about people looking at me like the marketing, the branding, you know what I'm saying, the gift of speaking, the audience, like, yes, all of that, but don't get it twisted. If you really want to follow the model I followed, I gave my life to God. You know what I'm saying? And I was in alignment with the plan that he has for me. And that's where my super success has come from. He putting his super with my natural. Mm. And then people just flood down. So this year, I had um, I had um, somebody else say that they wanted to be baptized, Mister Two Ways, right? And so he hit me, and I mean Mister Six Ways. So he Anthony is his yeah. name. That's the Instagram man. So he hit me. Was like, bro, can you baptize me? I did the same thing on stage. I said, yo, my man want to get baptized tomorrow. Is there anybody else that feels like they want to be a part of it? Like no pressure. I know this might be weird. You ain't come for this, bro. Seventy five people came down in tears. We did the baptism. And then the next day, the spirit was so thick in the conference. My pops came up to me and was just like, bro, me and E.T. been talking. We think you should give another appeal. And I was just like, man, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not trying to make it that, but it's that. And, bro, I went up on another 41 people. So over 100, about 110 people end up giving back, getting baptized at our conference. I've bro. never seen anything like that in my life. Yeah, crazy. It's, you you literally have to be in the room to even understand the experience. So uh, my team put together about an hour-long video of all the testimonials people gave. And half the people, which is like, I've never been to a conference that showed me how I can grow in my business, how I can grow and make more money how I can have a better life at home with my family and my spouse, and how I can be in alignment with God. Bro, I'm watching these testimonials, bro, in tears. Everybody's like, bro, I know now how to secure the bad, how to secure my place in the kingdom of God, you know what I'm saying, and how to secure my place in this world as a speaker. It's, it's holistic, bro, because you need all of that, and that's who I am. So I'm not that guy mm -hmm. that's going to talk about marketing, branding, and strategy. I'm also going to talk about being in alignment with God because I feel like speaking is ministry, whether you do corporate, schools, churches, universities. And so that's that's who I am. So I'm in the place now, bro, where I want to be a good steward of what God has given me. But one thing that's really, I don't want to say burdening me, is God is just like, take care of those who take care of you. And after the conference, everybody, I just met with my man, he a pastor, and he was like, bro, I just met with all the other pastors in the area with this denomination. He's like, bro, I told all of them what you've done. He's like, bro, we so amazed. You know, you baptized more people in over two days than we have collectively in years. He's just like, blah, 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 we blown away. And so I'm, and, and, he, and he told them, he was like, bro, this production of the conference was like, like BET or like the Oscars, like the Emmy. He was just like, brother, production, the professionalism. So he was blown away off of how the spirit was present, but the spirit of excellence that my team has. So, bro, I walked away from that conference like I got to be a better leader. Mm. Like I got to be a better human, bro. I'm looking at my team and how amazing, how talented, how phenomenal they are. And I'm like, it's a reflection of me. It's, you know, leadership, John Maxwell says it flows from the top down. So if I walked away from anything, bro, what am I focused on this new season is how can I be better? You know what I'm saying? How can I be a better man, a better human, a better leader, a better father, a better speaker, a better coach, a better CEO, a better entrepreneur? Like, how can I be better? How can I keep my heart and my mind pure so that everything else that flows from me flows to the team and we can go to new heights? Because next year when we got 2,000 people at the conference, you know what I'm saying, and, it, and it's on an even bigger scale, I want to keep the level of professionalism, but the spirit just as thick. 
And so I'm just really focused on, and again, that goes back to my wiring. Me and you the same. It's mm -hmm. like, how can I get better? What adjustments can I make? Bro, I'm not that guy that's like, yo, our conference was amazing. We killed it. I'm not that guy. I'm like, yo, that was amazing. God bless. We killed it. But what about next year? Bro, I'm literally at the conference. I even said something to you like, bro, I'll see you next year. Yeah. I already see the vision next year. I see the stage. I know. I know. I'm all, I'm literally on day two of the conference, but I'm already on 2024's conference. That's well, just how my brain's wired, bro. Yeah, nah. And, and I think that's the thing because I was, I was like, yo, the production. It, this is what you don't understand. So the first thing I need you to understand, when I asked Jeremy about what was the beginning, he said, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired and I wanted to get better. Mm -hmm. I just asked him about right now and what his next level is. And he said the same thing. I want to be better. Yeah, you're right. So it's yeah. consistent. Yeah. Right. Two. Jeremy showed me the venue that we were in, that he had this amazing production in two years before. Mm. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. He was showing me the picture in his phone like, bruh. Yo, man, we gonna do this right here. This is yeah. the, this this gonna be world changers. Yeah, he said, mm -hmm. and, and I'm gonna get E to pull up too. Lying. I'm gonna get E to pull up too. We gonna mm -hmm. pack this joint out. We gonna get like twelve hundred people to come mm -hmm. through. We looked at the venue, and the night before, I walked in that venue with a full on production unlike anything I've ever seen. Mm. Like you would have thought Jay employs a thousand people <laughs> to put this stuff together. But when you move in excellence, there's a multiplier effect. So the right. few are able to do, mm. I watched you manifest mm. this thing from a conversation that we just showed on the phone. Yeah. How many things are y'all y'all looking through, flipping through on your phone? Mm. You had this picture and you showed me and we were chopping it up. And I'm like, yep. oh yeah, yep. are we going to be there? Yep. And you spoke it then and you spoke to me about what the next one gonna look yep. like. So I, I have no doubt about that. Right. And and people don't, you know, people don't understand when I'm, even when I'm in those spaces, I'm in those spaces to serve you. Mm -hmm. I'm in those spaces to serve the mission, mm -hmm. to serve, like, mm -hmm. I'm on assignment when I'm locked. I right. ain't even in there right. to enjoy myself. Right. I'm in there. People right. are like, oh, bro, like, relax. You could be, I'm like, <laughs> nah. Right, right. Uh, what Ho said never change. Right, we we gonna keep consistent this thing. Yeah. It don't matter uh, whatever I ascend to or whatever God purposed me for. When there's a when there's something going on, mm. and and uh, it got next level stamp on it, sure I'm gonna pull up and be in the same capacity. And I, and I ain't gonna lie, <clears throat> I told Trace I was like, babe, I need him at every mastermind. I need him at every conference. Cause I feel like you like a brother, but also like a mental covering. I'm like, I need him in the space. Cause you can walk up on me and be like, Jay, you straight? What happened? And I'm like, how you know? You like, bro, it's on your face. I know you. Like, what's up? Talk to me. Let's talk through it. Like, I be needing that. You know what I'm saying? Cause I, I look at my team and I'm like, man, we got a great team, but it's like, I gotta be a better steward mm -hmm. over taking care of them and making sure they in the best position. Cause one way I felt as a leader. A few years ago, bro, full transparency is I had people in positions that they really wasn't gifted in. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking like you wire like me, you'll figure it out. And they wasn't. So now I've got everybody in our company, just about everybody. I got one more person I'm kind of working on. But everybody else within our organization is in areas that, that fit their gifts. Because this is what I found. If you put somebody that's perfect in an area or you put somebody that's working in an area or a field or a part of your company, but that's not suited to their gifts, mm -hmm. they can give 100% effort, but only going to get 70% results. Because mm -hmm. that's not they space in. But if you put somebody that's gifted in this area, they can give you 70% effort and 100% results. Yep. Because they in the sweet spot. So I'm in a I'm in a place now of making sure I have every one of my team members in a place that's great. Because I was kind of on some, I'm going to employ you because you my homeboy, you one of my day ones. So I'm going to justify your salary. But it's just like, bro, I feel I was on some homeboy stuff when I should have been on some CEO stuff. Mm. And so I had to grow through that. So that's why I, I, I need you at conferences. That's why I won't hire nobody without your approval. Bro, Crunt wouldn't be in this position. Nick wouldn't be in their position. You already shared with me, yep, this person's great here. Look out for this. I give my stamp of approval, but work on this. Like, I need that because I need to be able to, because you know me. 
You can mm-hmm. look at me and be like, yo, Jay off. Jay, you straight? What's up? How's your heart? I'm like, bro, how you know that? But it's like, that's why I got to keep you close because I need people like you that can show me myself to, to keep me within those parameters. That makes sense? No, I, absolutely. I, I, I'll be in tune. Like, yeah, I could tell. Sure. And even before it's about to kick off, I'm... So I, I can't even rest at those things, but I just it's a it's just a protectiveness. It's mm-hmm. a like okay, I can see something is on, and that's me serving in and my gift, right, right, right. And, and, and my and my anointing. And bro, I mean, I have I'm just waiting to see what the venue look like, but I have no doubt. Right, I'm like the only thing we missing at this point is getting told to pull up and perform or that's some it, or some right, halftime joint. But the that's production it. value from this year yeah. was incredible, man. But see, they messed up and let me go to MGM, and I seen that stage that me and Janet Jackson was just on, and I'm like, I Talk want my about, stage to look hey, like this. My man, don't, listen, we, I want we my stage status. to look like this. So, 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 what was this? What was the MGM joint about? My man was in a, my brother was in a stadium, bro. Yeah, speaking in front of thousands of people. Yeah, what was that experience like? Yeah. Uh, Life change. It was the biggest gig of my life. So I spoke for this company called Paparazzi. They are a jewelry company, and they got a hundred thousand consultants. They don't call them salespeople. They got a hundred thousand consultants, and so they have their annual convention in Las Vegas because it's the venue that can hold, you know, send the most people. And so it was at the MGM Grand. That's where all the big fights. Tyson when he bit Holyfield's ear, Pacquiao, Mayweather, everybody's performed there, bro. Elton John, J Lo, Celine Dion, Beyonce, Hove. Janet Jackson was just there. Hove, like Eric, Drake, like literally, bro. Dave Chappelle, everybody's performed there. I'm backstage. They like, yep, Celine Dion had this dressing room. This the same one Drake was in. This is the same one Janet Jackson is going to have tomorrow when she performs. I'm just thinking like, bro, this is crazy. And when I stepped up on the stage, as dope as our production was, I was looking at that stage like, yep, I want the bigger panel, glass, black, reflective floors. I want six screens this time as opposed to three. I want the moving sky joint. You know, and like, like my brain, I'm like, bro, my people deserve the best. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm at this event. And so now the more exposure I get, I'm like, I'm taking that back to the home team. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, there's another level of production. Now, our level of production was the same, but now when it comes to the equipment and the screens, and they had the lasers and the fire smoke. We had the smoke, but they had the lasers and the fire. I was like, y'all bringing out laser beams for your boy? <laughs> I was like, bro, so that's just how I am. I'm like, bro, why not we? Mm. Why not me? If y'all can have this type of production, my people deserve this type of production. And so that's just how I'm wired, man. I want to serve and, and over-deliver every opportunity I get, bro. And I really believe that's godly, bro. Like when you look at Ephesians 3, now unto him, 320, now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly, more than you can ask or think about the power that working in us. God is like, I'm going to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you can even ask or think. So we're actually more godly when we get to a point where we like, I'm going to exceed people's expectations. We actually take on the character of God. When we say, yep, you're expecting this, but I'm going to do that. You know why I rock with you so hard, bro? This is going to sound goofy, and it's going to sound so basic, but I hope they understand. So my wife, you know, I've been chasing her heart for years. Absolutely. Even though she's been taking me down through there, I've been chasing her heart, right? So, you know, I was trying to get her that Louis bum bag Mm -hmm. that was, like, exclusive. Could nobody find it? You was going to the different Soho, different places trying to get it. But I also realized her favorite bakery is mm-hmm. Levain's. That's right. And they got one like in Brooklyn or something like that? Yeah, they got they got one they got one in Soho, they got one in Williamsburg and Brooklyn. <clears throat> yeah. So her favorite bakery is Levain's. And so whenever I would have speaking engagements in New York, mm-hmm. y'all, I would fly in, I would get the cookies. There were times when I wouldn't have time and my wife would say, babe, I know you don't have time, don't worry about it. Dewan would scoop in, pick up the cookies for me because they got these huge, gooey, amazing cookies and bring them to the gig. So when I get home, I'm like, babe, you know I didn't have time, but I still got them cookies. And so you made me feel like the man in the crib. But the next level you went to is you like, yo, bro, that's what your wife like. You my brother. You want to smile on her face? I want to smile on her face. This guy, every single time he will come from New York, the last, the last like three years, bro. It's like every time you come to New York, you bring in a box of Levain's with them freshly baked cookies. Then, this is why I rock with you, you was just like, oh, when I bring the cookies to the crib and Tracy enjoys them, now Ebony and, and Sophie and Nick is like, oh man, what are those cookies? I want some. Oh, Tracy got a share. I don't want my sister to share. So now you coming with the big bag and you bringing cookies for everybody. I'm just like, bro, he different. And that's, that's why we can rock so hard because there's not many people that's wired 
like that. And so for you to do that consistently for a few years, it's funny. I told my wife, I said, babe, we probably should tell DeJuan, stop bringing the cookies. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like we just got so much going on. Let's just tell him, thank you, but I'm I'm, I don't, I'm cookied out now. I'm on, <laughs> I'm on to something new now. You feel hey, me? Let but me know what the next thing is. Got you. A, you got know what you. I'm saying? And, and really that comes from, I told you, I was, I was in my darkest moment. Hmm. I was in my darkest moment, and you were one of the very few people that was a beacon of light for me, mm. right? And then, you know, uh, my sister was going through her darkest moment. It was mm. a beacon of light for her, mm. right? So it's family, really. Yeah, you understand what sure. I'm saying? For and so sure. I saw one time just how disappointed you were oh, yeah. in missing the cookies and yeah. not getting them. And I said, he will never come in contact <laughs> with me ever again. I done took them cookies through customs. Oh, for sure. Like, oh, no, I don't no, care. No, 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 my bad. I didn't do the story justice. Can I can I tell it? <laughs> but Kim, can I can I mention oh, go that? Ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, I need y'all to really understand what level, what level our leader is on here, right? My man literally, when he came for one of our conferences or one of our events, he wasn't able to get to the cookies in time. His girl is so in tune with him. She was like, babe, I tell you what, I'm about to buy the cookies and I'm gonna jump on a flight from New York. And fly to meet you in Atlanta to give you, <laughs> bro. What are we? No, for real. What are we talking about? Yes. Yeah, so like that, that type of spirit of excellence now flows to where your girl is like, you know what, bro? I'm about to fly to New York. I know how much this means to you. I'm about to fly from New York to Atlanta and bring the cookies so you can. I'm just, when, bro. When I saw it, I was like, bro, whatever they need, whatever they need. Like you was, we was already there, but yeah. that was another level. Yeah, and that's bro. what people don't understand when it comes to that spirit of excellence is like to raise the level of consistency, you know what I'm saying? And to constantly pursue that, it's just different, bro. Yeah. I, listen, this is this is family ties forever. For sure. So before before we get out of here, bro, um, I want you to leave leave the people with one mindset. If you could leave them with one mindset, one perspective that they can take and do something actionable in their lives. What would that one mindset be? <clears throat> so let's recap of what I've given them so far, and then I'll give it to them. Mm -hmm. Go through. Right? So the concept of next level living, the constant pursuit to be everything that God has called us to be, right? Um, the second thing is always grateful, but never settle, right? It's like you're always grateful for what you have and what you've accomplished, but you're not going to settle, mm -hmm. right? That next level is like, okay, I'm not going to complain about what I'm going through. I'm going to embrace it because that's actually making me, you know what I'm saying, the best person, right? We talked about the importance of being disciplined. The most successful people in the world aren't the most gifted, the smartest, or the talented. They are those who are the most disciplined, mm -hmm. right? So I would tell somebody, you know what I'm saying, if I would just leave them one principle, I would just let them know that it's possible for them. Mm. Most people, for whatever reason, they struggle with if it's possible for them. And I don't, I don't, I feel like every time I take the stage, the mindset work that I'm doing, I'm trying to let them know it is possible for you. If I could just get you all that's watching and listening, tapped in with us right now, if I could just get you to believe it's possible for you, you're going to be Gucci. But most people don't even pursue it. They're not pursuing the next level living. They're not pursuing always grateful. Never. They're not pursuing that because they question if it's actually possible mm. for them. You're talking to somebody that lived a completely different lifestyle, that came from poverty, all sorts of brokenness, all sorts of anxiety, insecurity, depression, all of that, to now live a life on my own terms, traveling the world, making global impact, you know what I'm saying, and mentoring thousands of people in the speaking game. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I can do it, it's definitely possible for you, but you got to believe and mm -hmm. most people struggle with if it's actually possible for them. And so if they could just get to that point where they realize I might be wired differently from DeWan and Jeremy. I might not have the resources. I might not have the circles. I might not have the opportunities, but it's still possible for me. If they can just believe that, everything else will come into play. I found out about this Harvard study, and I'm sure you heard about it. For 25 years, they did research, and they looked at people, and they said, okay, 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 okay. We've got 25 years of data. We've researched and followed thousands of people, and we found that the majority of their success, 99% of their success, is directly tied to their reference group. Their reference group is the people that they hang out with on a consistent basis. All the people for over 25 years that was hitting high levels of success had a reference group 
of people who were highly successful. And like chameleons, they began to take on their mindset. They began to take on their behaviors. They began to take on their actions. So, so for those of you all that's like, well, I hear you, Jay, but I just don't have it within me. Okay, so you naturally don't believe it's possible for you, but are you hanging out? Are you surrounding yourself with people that's on that next level. So if I gave you any advice, it would be that while you're working on your mindset, one thing that would accelerate that is you get in circles, get around some people that's doing great things, that have been there and done that, and it's only a matter of time before that's going to rub off on you. Mm -hmm. Just like that, bro. Who are your day twos? Facts. If you don't have some, go get some. Yeah, my brother, my brother, my brother, I know we got things to do. I love you. Love you too, bro. Thank you yes, sir. for blessing the platform. Yes, sir. Let the people know where they can find you. Yeah. Uh, website, jeremyanderson.org.org or Instagram, Twitter, all the social medias, at one Jeremy Anderson. Just like that. Check my brother out, man. He's doing incredible, world-changing things. Y'all know me. I'm the warm tongue going everything. I appreciate y'all. See you on the next pod. We out. Let's get it.